the other day a teacher was asking um, some students to factorize a, a quadratic equation and quite a few of them were looking back at the teacher just nonplussed um, not only struggling with what a quadratic equation was but um, what, did it, what did it mean to factorize something or what were factors so I just thought I'd just do a little bit of um, how, how I see um, a possible way forward for some of those students. Here, um, here's 12 objects, um, sort of just 12 little one centimetre cubes just sort of randomly spread over the table. But if I was to ask a student to represent um, 4 times 3, there's my 12 objects, it wouldn't be uncommon for them to show me 4 groups of 3. While that's absolutely correct, it's not immediately obvious from that representation that four groups of three is in fact the same as three groups of four. Now, so perhaps some of the, the difficulty here comes with that first number there represents the number of groups and this one perhaps the number in each group. So three groups of four is in fact equal to four groups of three, but I don't know if that representation makes it clear. We could represent, however, our 12 as a rectangular array. So here's our little 12 units with three columns and four rows. And notice you could just turn that around um, and have four rows or three columns. Here you can definitely see that I've got three columns of four or I've got four rows of three. So in this situation here, the four and the three, if you like, have equal status just as both of them, just the sides of that rectangle. So when we talk about factors, if we can think of them in those terms, and of course, 12 has other factors. So 2 times 6 or 6 times 2. Or even 1 times 12. So if you can just sort of keep that in the back of your mind for a minute, just um, let's see if we can form rectangles out of things if we want to find factors. Just as I build this next part up, here's another little block that's 1 one unit wide, but I'm not really sure how long that is. And in fact, it doesn't really matter how long that is. In other words, I'm going to allow this length here to vary to whatever we like. So this is variable and often in maths we'll call that x. So this would be 1 times x, so that, that little red bar there represents an x. And in the same way, see this in the same way, see how this has got a little square on the top, but the size of that square, I'm just going to allow it to vary, so that from here to here, that might be x long, and so this would also then represent x squared. So let's go back to see what the teacher asked them about quadratics. Remember that this represents x squared. Each of these represent an x. So in fact, I've got seven x's and here I've got 12. And so the teacher, the question they asked them was, can you factorize x squared plus 7x plus 12? And so based on the earlier work where we were factorising 12, the way to factorise this is can you put that into a rectangle? Can you take all of those blocks, move them around and form a rectangle? Because if you can, the sides of that rectangle would represent the factorisation or the factors of x squared plus 7x plus 12. Have a look at when they're organised this way. Here's my x squared. There's four of the 7x, and there's another 3, and here's my 12. Have a look at what the sides are now. Remember the side of that 
that x squared was x by x. So this side length here is x plus another 3. And then this side length here is x plus 4. So the whole quadratic, x squared plus 7x plus 12, can be thought of as the multiplication of two numbers. So I'm going to put them in brackets so that we can see them distinctly. x plus 3, that's one of the sides, multiplied by x plus 4. So there the, there's the factorization of x squared plus 7x plus 12 into x plus 3 and x plus 4. Here's another one. This is an x squared. Here I've got 6x, 2x and 12. So you'll notice that the factorization of x squared plus a total of 8x plus 12 this time comes out to x plus 2. That's this side length. multiplied by x plus 6. That's that side length. Now I know when I was taught to factorise quadratic equations, I was simply told to think of the factors of 12 that add up to 8. And so my factors of 12, I'd think 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. And then you'd go through that list here and go, well, which ones of these add up to 8? And I can see it's the 2 times 6. But can you see exactly why? Here, there's my 2, 2 times 6. There's my factors of 12. And notice the 2 plus the 6 to give me the 8, because I need, I've got 8 x's that I've got to be able to line up around to make that rectangle. So that's sort of array thinking in terms of factorizations. What It's very, very, very useful for just thinking in terms of numbers, but also extends into uh, other areas of mathematics, in this case, um, factorizing quadratic equations.